All right, welcome everyone to video number two. Uh, today we're going to be working on section 4.2, talking about congruence and triangles. Um, I hope the first video was helpful. I um, hope you're getting kind of used to the style and the format now and being able to operate at your own pace uh, with these videos. Uh, but today we want to look at section 4.2 and our objectives are to identify congruent figures and corresponding parts. All right, so when two geometric figures are congruent, um, they have exactly the same size and shape. So we've talked about the word congruency before with angles and measures, but when we say two figures are congruent, uh, that means they have the exact same size and same shape. Uh, so if you notice here, in, in, on this side over here, the triangle stands out, and this triangle stands out as well. So they're not congruent to the other because they don't have the same size or the same shape. Right, and we also know that when two figures are congruent, uh, there's a correspondence between their angles and their sides. Uh, so we know if corresponding angles are congruent, if we're talking about two congruent figures, and we also know that the corresponding sides are congruent as well. So what we have here is something we call congruency statements. So if I was talking about triangle ABC, and I told you that triangle ABC was congruent, to triangle P, Q, R. You could draw these, and this is an appropriate drawing to have. Now, that being said, when we have our corresponding angles, when we, when we say corresponding, this is what we mean. It means that they're in corresponding positions. So if this A right here is kind of in the back left corner, then P would be its corresponding angle. Similarly, if this angle B is up top, we also know Q corresponds to the location of that one. That applies for the angles and applies for the sides as well. So this side AB here is kind of on the left of the triangle. So this would be the corresponding sides here. So we see that A corresponds with P, B corresponds with Q, and C corresponds with R. And same concept applies right here. Okay, so now we've started off with this statement here. First thing I tell you is that shape A, B, C, D, E is congruent to shape F, G, H, I, J. Okay, so when you're going to be looking for the variables of X and finding the variable value of Y, this is the way that you want to look about it. So if I'm going to solve for X, I want to look for a spot on these shapes where X is. So I know X is right here. So I want to find which side on this shape right here corresponds to the 3x plus 4. So I know it's this side of 10 right here. So I set up my equation 3x plus 4 equals 10 3x equals 6 I know x equals 2. So same thing I want to look for now where the y is and the y represents this angle right here. So I want to look for somewhere on this shape where that same angle is. It turns out to be this 47 here. So same thing, write an equation for it. I know 8y minus 9 needs to correspond with that angle of 47 degrees. So when I take care of this, 47 plus 9, 56. And then just solve for y. y equals 7. So we looked at this. We found the corresponding parts, found the corresponding angles, and wrote an equation to solve for the variables. Okay, so now what we're going to work on is writing a congruency statement. And we'll be doing some practice with these in class. Uh, these are a bit tedious, but guys, just take your time with these. Be specific and be diligent. Um, so we're looking at all these corresponding parts in this image, and we see which ones are congruent and which angles are congruent. So I'm going to start off with the sides first, and then we'll talk about the angles. So first one I'll start out with, I'll start with side FD. I know it's going to be congruent to side TR. And the order matters here. So I looked at F, and I saw that F had the three congruency marks. So I know I had to start out with T, because T has those three congruency marks as well. So we know FD is congruent to TR. Uh, next step we'll go with is FE. And we know that FE needs to be congruent to TS. 
Same deal. I know that it starts off with three congruency marks right here. So I had to start off with this one here. So we have one more side left. We talked about FD, FE. Let's talk about DE. So I know that side DE needs to be congruent to RS. So that's my congruency statements for my sides. So let's do the congruency statement for the angles. Sorry about that. Angles. All right, so we have three angles on each triangle. So I have angle F, angle E, angle D. I'm writing my congruency statement. I know angle F needs to be congruent to angle T, angle E needs to be congruent to angle S, and angle D needs to be congruent to angle R. And this is it. This is our congruency statement. And we'll do more practice with those. Like I said, a little tedious, but just be specific and we should be good. Alright, so the third angle's theorem that tells us if we have two angles of one triangle that are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are also congruent. So right here we have angle A that's congruent to angle D and we have angle B that's congruent to angle E. So that makes sense because let's say E wa A was 35 and B was 45 we would combine those and we would have 80 which would mean that angle C would need to equal, we know that these need to be 100. Now, this isn't obviously to scale, but um, so alternate same thing. We said that e, A has to be congruent to D, so D would need to be 35. We said B is congruent to E, so E would need to be 45. So that would leave us no option for C. I mean, sorry, for F. F would need to be 100. So that's how that makes sense. Okay, so take a second, pause the video, try to solve this one, um, and when you unpause the video, I will try and do it myself. Okay, alright, so let's try working on this one. So we have triangle ABC, and remember from the previous section that the interior angles of a triangle need to add up to 180. So I'll just mark this one, we'll call this the question mark. So we know that 30 plus 110 plus whatever angle this is needs to add up to 120. So we do our math out, 140 plus question mark. So we know that this last angle, angle C, needs to be 40. So we know that since A has this congruency mark here, it's congruent to D. We also know that B is going to be congruent to E as well. So if C is 40, that means that angle F needs to be 40 degrees as well. Okay, let's do some more practice for these problems. So if we're trying to find the value of X here, let's think about all the information that we know upright. So let me just name these angles first so we have some reference point for these. So we know that angle A is congruent to angle D. Now we also know that these angles right here are congruent to one another. So let's write that. We know that angle B C A is congruent to angle D C E. So it's already two angles that we know are congruent to each other, so according to the third angle's theorem, that leaves us to make the conclusion that angle B has to be congruent to angle E. So it makes solving for X easy. If we know B is 65 degrees, then we know that needs to be angle E. So the moment you've all been waiting for, the proofs. Once again, I know these are difficult, but please be patient with this stuff. Work hard. If I can do it, you can do it. 
So I'm actually not going to get through this whole proof right now, but I want to make sure you're copying as much possible now so tomorrow in class uh, we can go over this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is look at my given. So I know that side AB is parallel to DC, and we have those arrow marks right here to show that. Uh, we also know that side AB is congruent to DC, and we have the red congruency marks to show that. So our next given is that E is the midpoint of BC and AD. Now we don't have anything to show for that on the diagram, so let's actually mark that up. So if E is the midpoint of BC, that means that these two segments here have to be congruent to each other, because the midpoint splits them in half perfectly. Alternately, we also know that AD has a midpoint of E, so that means these three marks represent that they're congruent to each other. Okay, so now our diagram's all marked up. We know what we're trying to do, so let's go to the statements. So I'm going to write my givens in my statements, so I know that AB is parallel to DC. I also know that side AB is congruent to DC. And I'm going to abbreviate this last part here as E midpoint. And that's just so you know that I'm, talking, I'm saying that E is the midpoint of BC and AD. But for the sake of time and space, I will abbreviate that. But no abbreviating when you're actually writing proofs. Okay, so we're good. We got the given. First step. First step's always the hardest. So we'll go from there. So now let's think about if we can make any conclusions concerning these triangles in this diagram. Well, I know that this angle right here needs to be congruent to this angle right here because of the vertical angle theorem. So we need to say that. So we know that angle B, E, A is congruent to angle C, E, D. And we know this because of the vertical angles theorem. I don't think we'll have enough space for theorem, but we'll leave it like that. Okay, so so far I have two sides of each triangle, that are, three sides of each triangle that are congruent, one angle, so I need some more angles. So the fact that we know that these two lines are parallel means that this side BC here, this is almost like a transversal. So this is similar to chapter 3 we talk about parallel lines. So I know that this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. Now what's the property that tells us those two angles need to be congruent if these lines are parallel? Remember, those are alternate interior angles. So I can make the statement that A, B, E is congruent, this angle right here, is congruent to this angle over here, which is angle D, C, E. And those are congruent, we just said, because of alternate exterior angles. Okay, so I'm actually going to leave this proof right here for now. Copy all this down and we'll finish this one together in class. Okay, so some more properties I want to do before the, the lesson's over. Um, the reflexive property of congruent triangles, every triangle is congruent to itself. Symmetric property of congruent triangles. Once again, this is similar to the symmetric property we learned in section 2.4 and that we learned in chapter 3. And we use transitive as well. Okay, so once again, this is not your homework that's due, but this will be the homework that we do together in class. Uh, guys, go back again, copy anything down that you need to, you have questions on. Uh, thank you for your hard work and your diligence for this process. I appreciate it. Uh, let's keep working and let's strive for excellence. All right, guys, have a good day and I'll see you tomorrow.